Let's get a top-down view, though. James Garish now joining us from Sean Partners and Markets Matters to tell us what it all means. James, nice to see you again this morning. Just some general market commentary. Should we read too much into that pullback on Wall Street? Uh, we were trading, you know, at highs we haven't seen for weeks here in Australia. So, so far, really, uh, so good for the month of April. Nice to see you as well, Nadine, this morning. And, um, yeah, you read, you you look at every session that plays out over in the US market, and I think you've got to um, sort of try and read into it in some way or the other. I think the key takeaways overnight was um, the employment data, as you may mention, of was weaker than expected. So um, that feeds into uh, the uh, the likelihood of a softer non-farm payrolls print come Friday. Uh, you know, 240,000 jobs added is expected uh, there on Friday with the unemployment rate to stay at 3.6%. I think there's probably risk around that um, uh, risk around that number. So um, uh, that was a, a key takeaway for me last night. Weaker employment fed into uh, lower bond yields. Uh, the expectation that the Fed is going to be forced to cut interest rates. Um, so bond yields, particularly the front end of the curve. So US two years were down um, sort of 13 basis points. Uh, and that fed into a weaker US dollar. So the weaker US dollar was supportive of things like gold, which uh, rallied um, uh, nearly 2%. It's trading at 2,021. So uh, a couple of clear takeaways for mine, the Dean. But I'm a little bit more cautious in the media, in, in the near term, in terms of markets and what we're seeing at the moment. Yeah, and James, I mean, we've got the US jobs non-farm payroll report being released on Good Friday with markets closed. And markets here closed on mm. Monday as well. You've got to think, I mean, You'd be a bit reticent to take on too much risk ahead of this long weekend, wouldn't you? Yeah, totally. You've got to be pretty confident in your position. So if in doubt, stay out in terms of um, uh, positioning ahead of the long weekend um, uh, here. Uh, and it's a really important uh, data print. The Fed have alluded to the fact they're looking at the employment situation as a um, input into their decision around interest rates. Uh, I think what we've seen you know, more recently is data very much supports the Fed being on on hold from, from from here. The market is positioned for the Fed to be on hold and they're actually positioned uh, for some pretty decent cuts in interest rates before Christmas. So, you know, when I look at the US two year yield trading at 3.83% overnight uh, versus the um, overnight target rate of uh, the top end of the range is 5%, you can clearly see that interest rate cuts are being priced into the market and that has you know, ramifications, as I said before, to the US dollar, the US dollar index, which is a really important metric that we track. You know, it was trading at 114 um, last December. It's now 101 and a half overnight. And I think it goes lower as um, US interest rates are cut more aggressively, aggressively than other areas of the world. Fascinating. OK, let's talk gold. Climbed above that key psychological technical 2000 level. Uh, can it stay here? Uh, what are the drivers and does this make you look more favorably on some of the positions you have in gold? Uh, yes, it can stay here. And yes, it looks it makes us look more favorably on some of our gold positions. I think, um, you know, the reasons uh, that I just alluded to there around um, the US dollar, the US dollar is such an important um, denominator of gold prices so that trend is clearly down in terms of the US dollar uh, that trend is down because of the expectations around the interest rate differentials so to me that's got further to play out I think um, uh, the other important thing is you know when I, when I think about we're writing quarterly reports at the moment thinking about all of the, the confluence of factors that investors are grappling with at the moment there's a lot out there um, so if you've got a situation where there's a lot of different um, uh, you know, scenarios that can play out in the market, one asset class to go and buy is gold. So um, you know, to me, it's been, it's been a few false dawns in it. Um, some of the gold companies in Australia have struggled uh, because they've had operational issues and the like. A lot of those have now got their house in order. So they've got, you know, there's probably a lot more operational leverage in the gold players domestically versus the gold price. So I think you know, I'm bullish on um, the gold players broadly in Australia. Uh, we've got Newcrest in our portfolio and we've got Evolution in our portfolio uh, and we've got a smaller position in St. Barbara in our emerging companies portfolio, which um, we think all go higher from here. Okay, so gold is good. Um, what about AGL Energy? Um, you've got it on your list. You've brought a chart along. We saw Brookfield selling out yesterday. This flew under my radar. Just get us across the detail and what it actually means. 
Yeah, so just before trade commenced yesterday, there was a crossing of about $150 million worth of stock. That was 2.65% of the company. Um, it was done at $8.30, so it's Brookfield selling out of their, their holding in AGL. Of course, they were part of the Canon Brooks um, led takeover tilt um, uh, about six months um, six months or so ago. So they uh, bid 8.25. Um, uh, Brookfield has now been become involved in Origin. Um, so they're liquidating their um, position in AGL. What I would say is that it was uh, done at 8.30 versus uh, an 8.21 last close in terms of the share price. So nine cent premium. It shows the fair amount of um, uh, buyer appetite origin in the market so uh, sorry for agl in the market i should say um the fact that they could get such a big line of stock done at a premium to the last close now, i know that it's come back yesterday just below the 8:30 price but we're bullish on it um we you know bought it sub seven dollars um and, and it's sort of penciled in the nine dollar area uh for agl energy i think the rhetoric around that changes over the next uh six to twelve months nadine well, that's interesting. I'm thinking about some of the other more defensive plays in the market, some of the other utilities, perhaps. I mentioned S&P 500, best performing sector was utilities. APA Group was up early in the session. Um, do you look favorably on the sector? Yeah, I do. I think there's, you know, there's, there's a... There's a lot of reasons why you should have a, a defensive earnings streams in your portfolio, particularly if you're a more risk averse uh, investor. Uh, you know, our income portfolio, for instance, has more infrastructure style companies in there than, say, our growth portfolio. Um, APA, you may mention of, we don't have that in the portfolio. We have had it previously. So, um, you know, seller above $11 was our last trade in terms of, of, of that. I'm a buyer down here at, um, although we don't own it, I, I do, and we have written about it, and I do like it around this $10 area. It's all around the margin over and above bonds that uh, APA trades at. So uh, sort of sub $10, that looks attractive. We do have Transurban in the portfolio. Again, another no, really high quality infrastructure company. Um, that's, you know, we've probably got a preference for APA and, and, and thinking about the potential switch between Transurban and APA. But, you know, you t you, yeah, infrastructure more broadly absolutely has a, a key role to play in um, those more defensive income focused portfolios, Nadine. 